My name's Owen, I'm the Education Worker at Forces Watch, based in London, and we look at the ethics of armed forces recruitment. One of our main areas of work is campaigning for the minimum age of armed forces recruitment to be raised from 16 to 18. Um, there's several reasons we work for this. Firstly, it is uncommon in the international community um, to recruit 16-year-olds in particular. So the UK is the only country in the European Union that recruits 16-year-olds into the armed forces, one of very few in the world. The 16 and 17 year olds that are joining the armed forces are mostly going into the army and a lot of those are going into the infantry which is one of the most dangerous parts of the armed forces with higher rates of risk of being killed, mentally or physically injured. Um, they tend to take more disadvantaged young people into those roles. Um, the level of sort of qualifications to join the army and the infantry in particular are very low so it can seem like the only option for some young people. Um, we think that is not acceptable, there needs to be more choice available to young people. There is the huge expansion of the cadet forces into state schools, so traditionally they were in private schools mostly, um, and that's again being targeted at schools in disadvantaged areas. Scholarships that are provided for sixth form students and further education students, a um, very small number, relatively speaking, um, but by taking one of those you're committing to a career in the armed forces after your either sixth form further education studies or university if you go on to that. Armed forces visits to schools, um, they're mostly in secondary schools or sixth form colleges but they do also happen in primary schools, uh, special education schools um, as well. Um, there are about 11,000 each year um, which is over 600,000 students. Um, they vary in terms of the activity so they might be more careers focused promoting specific armed forces jobs, they might be more outdoor activities. Then we have the Military Ethos in Schools programme, which is a newer development, and it's striking because it's a national policy, and it's coming from the Department for Education as well as the Ministry of Defence, um, and that covers a few different schemes. So there's Troops for Teachers, which is getting veterans into teaching jobs, often fast-tracking them. Um, there's Alternative Provision with the Military Ethos, which is um, working with really, tending to be working with um, struggling students, taking them out of the classroom, uh, doing often outdoor activities, um, but with some elements of kind of military approach. And that's 95 million has been spent on that so far, roughly. Um, and the most recent expansion of the cadet forces that's been committed to, which is a further 150 units to be created in state schools by 2020, is going to cost 50 million. So that's a huge amount of money um, for actually relatively um, quite a small number of students that are going to benefit from that. Um, so there are major questions about could alternative approaches be more cost effective um, with, with that money that is public money ultimately and um, how is it being spent and for what purposes and what agendas are behind that those are big questions. More broadly that question of balance and debate that kind of flows through all of our work um, so we're also concerned in any case wherever the armed forces the military more broadly are engaging with young people um, and engaging with society more broadly how much is um, it a sanitised, glamorised image of the armed forces that's being put across, um, as opposed to a sense of it being a debate, it being controversial, um, the realities of war being looked at very seriously and kind of honestly. In terms of addressing the way that the military engage with schools, um, we think the best thing is to speak to the schools, um, either as parents or guardians, as students or teachers, other staff, um, particularly with head teacher or governors, and kind of raise those concerns, provide the evidence, show that, for example, recruitment is a major driver of that engagement, show that there is a lot of evidence that it is a sanitised, glamorised image of the armed forces that's being put across, um, show that that could be in conflict with education legislation around political balance, um, aside from the kind of moral you know, imperative that young people are being well informed. On the other hand, people can encourage workshops in schools or youth groups um, from orga organisations like Forces Watch or Veterans for Peace that are giving alternative points of view or that are facilitating more critical debate around it. We do try to do work as well at the kind of um, policy level to try and change you know, the bigger structures around this. And we've had major success on that recently in Wales with the Welsh Government accepting that there is a need for greater transparency on armed forces visits to schools in Wales and there is a need for ensuring balance in terms of the way that the armed forces are presented to students. So the kind of there is there is progress being made.